Now, if you are looking to beat your Karokan tournament player, then congratulations on clicking this video. Because if you manage to watch until the end, not only you are going to equip with a lifetime surprise weapon against this opening, but along the way, I have shown some cool tricks and traps where if your opponent fall for it, then the game can be finished very quickly. After e4 and c6, I propose you start with knight to f3, whereupon after d5, rather than going for the popular options, white should continue with e5. And I must tell you that I'm using this secret weapon from last one year or so, and this line serves me very well that I don't have any problems against Karakhan. Personally, I think this is one of the most trickiest response to Karo Khan, where many black players doesn't know how to respond. For example, if you look at the database, these are the four top choices, and amongst them, bishop to g4 and bishop to f5 is by far the most popular choices. However, you will also learn what to do against black other choices. So let's start with the black most popular choice, namely bishop to g4. Pinning down the knight, and the black idea is very obvious. He wants to play e6 and c5, a kind of a French structure where bishop is outside the pawn chain. Okay, we are going to respond with d4, and after e6, we play this crafty move, c3 which looks very innocent but it has a crafty idea that the most popular choice by black c5 actually has been prevented here how let's check out well white will take this pawn and if you think that what's the big deal black can simply take it back as it is the top choice from the black side well, guess what? Black has fallen for our first trick, and I hope you indeed see this wonderful check, which actually wins the piece at just 7th move of the game. So watch out for this one, as in Blitz and Bullet, many strong players has fallen for this. Okay, what about Black identify this threat and continue with knight to c6. This time around, we can defend our c pawn with bishop to e3, yet again setting up a nice platform for our upcoming trick that if your opponent continue with knight captures e5, looks like winning the pawn and attacking the knight. But unfortunately, the same story, after this queen check, two of the black pieces are hanging and what else, knight to c6, queen captures d4, winning the piece, but this time at ninth move of the game. So it is pretty clear that black can't touch our e5 pawn, and if he plays anything else, then white has moves such as bishop to d4 and b4, which confirms his advantage of extra pawn. So the baseline goes as follow. Bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and now black can take on e5, with everything looks so cool, right? Guess what? Here comes the third tricky platform, and white will kickstart with bishop to b5 check. Black knight has to block it, whereupon we can pile up the pressure on this pin knight with some very natural moves. c4, obviously black can't take it. If he continue with moves such as a6, then not to worry, our bishop can always come back on a4. And please note, there is no b5 available here. So that is right out of the equation. Black has to defend this pawn. After this, yup, you guessed it, more pressure with knight to c3 and there is a game in the database 
were a black player nearly 2400 continue with bishop to e7 white took on d5 and after both the side castle on the king side one simple move rook to d1 and black to his horror find out that he can do absolutely nothing to save this pawn so this is one of the high profile trick in this line which you definitely want to watch out in your tournament practice many of you say that well all the tactics is based on this weak bishop so how about taking this knight on f3 and then take on c5 isn't black is clearly better well of course not as this time around we have this lethal move queen to g3 which by force provoked the move g6 white should be more than happy if black continue with moves such as king f8 or bishop f8 which is obviously some are the bad choices so g6 what else and there is a famous saying that when you play g6 you want to put your bishop on g7 as if you look at this position these dark squares are become extremely weak and the guardian is playing football match at somewhere else <laughs> what i mean to say is there are severe consequences of this and to point out the problems i like to show you a model game of a grandmaster where white continue with knight to d2 knight to c6 bishop to d3 knight to e7 knight to b3 attacking this bishop bishop to b6 and now you will see why this is such a big deal as white continue with bishop to g5 black thought i can play queen to c7 getting out of the pin and when white defend the e pawn with bishop to f6 black wants to play rook to g8 so that he wants to castle on the queen side well white shows this is a pretty bad idea by some accurate moves a4 a5 bishop to b5 encouraging black to castle on the queen side which in fact black did but it turned out as a big mistake can you see why the answer is very simple white can took on c6 and unfortunately for black he has to take back with the pawn and after this some very simple moves knight to d4 that knight is way too strong so black obliged to take yet another piece but at the end of the result if you look at this position white has a very simple plan namely castle on the king side and then become hell loose on the c file where clearly if you put this position in any chess engine it is obviously liking the wide with a huge margin 